Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My dear friends, what a joy it is for me to see all of you and welcome you once again to our church, and particularly those who are also watching uh, via live stream, we welcome you as well. And one day we'll all be back together again in God's house. But until then, we're careful and we watch out for one another and protect one another. And we ask God to bless us this year as we gather for the first time as the family of St. Margaret's School to offer to God the prayer of thanksgiving, a prayer of the Holy Spirit, the Mass of the Holy Spirit, which always begins a new school year. So we gather asking God and thanking God for the beautiful summer that we had. And we ask God to bless us and our families as we begin a new school year, to bless our teachers and our staff, to bless ourselves as students, always learning. No matter how old we are, we can always learn more about the love that God has for all of us. So we ask God to hear our prayers, and all of you have your own intentions to pray for. A good, successful year. Pray for your families, pray for yourselves, pray for your friends. So many things to pray for. So many people to bring to God's attention. And that's what the Mass does. We bring people's love and their attention to God. So all the people we think about, all the needs that we have, all the petitions that we have, we present to God now. And so, my dear friends, to offer to God an act of fitting worship, we first call to mind our sins, our faults, our failings. And we ask God to forgive us and to give us the strength and the grace not to sin again. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me, the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Thank <clears throat> you. Let us pray. May the paraclete who proceeds from you, we pray, O Lord, enlighten our minds and lead us into all truth, just as your Son has promised, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated now as we listen very carefully to the Word of God. A reading from the first epistle of Paul to Timothy. Beloved, teach and urge these things. Whoever teaches something different and does not agree with the sound words of our Lord Jesus Christ and the religious teaching is conceited, understanding nothing, and has a morbid disp disposition for arguments and verbal disputes. From these come envy, rivalry, insults, evil suspicions, and mutual friction among, among people with corrupted minds who are deprived of the truth, supposing religion to be a means of gain. Indeed, religion with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into the world, just as we shall not take anything out of it. If we have food and clothing, we shall be content with that. Those who want to be rich and are falling into temptation and into a trap, and into many foolish and harmful desires, which plunge them into ruin and destruction, for the love of money is the root of all evils, and some people in their desire for it have strayed from the faith, and have pierced themselves with many pains. But you, man of God, avoid all this. Instead, pursue righteousness, devotion, faith, love, patience, and gentleness. Compete well for the faith 
lay hold for eternal life, to which you were called when you made the noble confession in the presence of many witnesses. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response is, blessed the poor in spirit, the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Why should I fear in evil days when my wicked ensnares ring me round? They trust in their wealth, the abundance of their riches is their boast. Blessed the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Yet in no way can a man redeem himself or pay his ra ransoms to God to price too high is the price to redeem one's life. He would never have enough to remain alive always and not see destruction. Fear not when a man grows rich, when the wealth of his house becomes great. For when he dies, he shall take none of it. His wealth shall not follow him down. The kingdom of heaven is Though in his lifetime he counted himself blessed, they will praise you for doing well for himself, for yourself. He shall join the circle of his forebears, who shall never see more, who shall never more see light. Blessed, I mean, the blessed poor the spirit, poor in spirit, the kingdom of heaven is there.
with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus journeyed from one town and village to another, preaching and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God. Accompanying him were the twelve, and some women who had been cured of evil spirits and infirmities. Mary, called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had gone out of her. Joanna, the wife of Herod's steward, Chusa. Susanna, and many others who provided for them out of their resources. The Gospel of the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. <clears throat> As I mentioned to you earlier, it's so good to see so many of you here in church today. And I hope that you had a wonderful summer, a restful summer. And we begin now another school year of schooling. I want to tell you a little story. The year was 1548, the 16th century. And in a small little town in Sicily called Messina, the parish priest was very concerned about the children in that village. They were all farmers. And as farmers, they got up very early in the morning, and they worked the fields with their moms and dads. And then by the time about 12 noon, 1 o'clock, they were done working. And after that, they had nothing to do. Because boys and girls back then, nobody went to school. Very, very few. Only the very, very, very rich went to school. The average kid never went to school. They couldn't read. They couldn't write. They didn't know how to do math. But they knew basic things. And the priest was very concerned because the boys and the girls, but mostly the boys, would get themselves in a lot of trouble. They had nothing to do. And this local priest heard about a new group of men who just kind of came together. And their founder was a man named Ignatius. And he was a soldier. And he was a knight. And he was in a battle. And a cannonball hit his leg. And his leg kind of blew up. And it was very, very painful. And he was in the hospital for many, many, many months. But he always loved to read. He knew how to read. And he would read books about the knights, and he would read books about the soldiers, he would read about mysteries, and all these things. But after a while, he got tired of reading about that, and he ran out of all the books to read about knights and war and violence. And there was a little monk that would come and visit him every once in a while. And he said to the monk, I have nothing else to read. So the little monk said, I'll give you a book to read. It was a book about the life of Jesus. And he read that book, and he studied that book, and he wanted to read more and more and more and more and more about Jesus. And then the little monk gave him books about the lives of the saints. Saints, ordinary people. And how they die for Jesus. And he was so amazed that they would do that for another man. And all the saints who gave up all their wealth, all the beautiful lives of the saints that you know as well, and he gathered a group of men after he got better. And they went around teaching and preaching this Jesus of Nazareth. They became priests. And the little society that they gathered together, they called themselves the Society of Jesus. We know them as the Jesuits. And so this little priest in this little town in Sicily, Messina, sent word up into Italy to this man named Ignatius and said, Father, can you send some priests down to my little village to teach our children? Because they're getting themselves in trouble, and there's really not much for them to do after they finish the farm. So Ignatius sent four priests down to this little town of Messina, and there they started a school. But before they did anything else, they gathered all the kids together out of the village, went to the church, like we are today, and they offered the Mass to the Holy Spirit asking that the Holy Spirit of God would come upon these children and come upon these priests that they would have a good school year. Boys and girls, for the past 600 years, 
That's a long time, 600 years. Every college that's Catholic, every university that is Catholic, every high school that is Catholic, and yes, every grammar elementary school is Catholic, always begins the school year in what we're doing now. Ask of the Holy Spirit. Asking the Holy Spirit of God to come to us this year and to help us to have a good year, to learn first and foremost about Jesus. And everything you do in your classroom, be it history or English or mathematics or arithmetic, always has to be done in the light of Jesus. Because boys and girls, as you go up to the front doors of our school, you look to the left, and on that big brick wall, there's a big, beautiful blue cross. The only reason St. Margaret's School exists and is there is for one reason, for you to learn about Jesus and how Jesus influences everything that we do. The way we look at the world, the way we treat one another, the way we study, the way everything we happen and everything that we do is because of Jesus. He's our first and our foremost teacher. Even adults, Father Clark, myself, Mrs. Maldonado, all your teachers, we are still learning about Jesus. So boys and girls, yes, it's important to know math. Yes, it's important to know history. Yes, it's important to know English. Yes, it's important to know art and music and science. All these things are very important to learn. And that's what we call schooling. You're in school from 8 o'clock to 2.34, or 2.35, 2.45, what is it? 2.45, right? That's schooling. But your education goes beyond school. You learn about things from your moms and dads. You learn things from the church. You learn things from your friends. That's all education. And so schooling is just one little sliver of that big old pie. And so everything you do, boys and girls, always do in the light of Jesus. And how do we know Jesus about Jesus? Two ways. And the first way is through something we call the Holy Bible. And after Mass, we're going to bless the Bibles and give it to all our new students and welcome them to our school and give them the Word of God. Now, this is just a book. It's a holy book, but it's a book. It has words in it just like any other book. But when you read from this book and proclaim this book, these words become alive. The living Word of God. That's why we always treat the Bible in a very holy way contains God's word when we speak that word, when we proclaim that word, when we live that word. And so boys and girls, as we begin a new school year, we ask Jesus to be with us in a special way, to help us to learn the important things in life, how to love God, first and foremost, before we learn to love anybody else, we love God. And then because we love God, we treat one another with respect, treat one another with kindness. We treat one another with a sense of goodness. Why? Because God lives in you. God lives in you. God lives in every human being. That's why we treat them with respect. It doesn't matter the size they are. It doesn't matter the color of their skin. It doesn't matter where they come from. It doesn't matter who their mom is. It doesn't matter who their dad is. It doesn't matter what nationality you are. You treat one another with love and respect. Why? Because God is in you. And the dignity of the human person goes beyond all those other little things. And so you learn that. And you know that already. Because your moms and dads probably taught that to you. And certainly you're going to learn that in the school this year as well. And so we ask the Holy Spirit, who is the form of a dove. Now a dove, that's interesting too. Why you a dove? Well, a dove is a very peaceful, peaceful bird. It doesn't fight. It doesn't go after any other birds. It's very peaceful. But a dove is a very fast bird. 
The Holy Spirit is that way. God's Spirit isn't a forceful, vengeful God. He's a very peaceful, loving God. But he moves very quickly. And he goes and moves through you and your love for one another in a very quick way. And so the Holy Spirit of God will come upon you this year and pray to the Holy Spirit. There's three beautiful words, very important prayer. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. That's a beautiful prayer to say. Say it every morning you wake up. Say it before classes. Say it before tests. Say it before you're going to think you're going to get into trouble. Say it for your teachers. Say it for one another. And so as we begin a new school year, we do it the right way. Just say St. Ignatius did and those men in Messina. And the very first school, the very first university of the Jesuits is the University of Messina, which you know what, boys and girls? is still in existence today. From 1548 to 2021, on that same piece of property, is the School of St. Ignatius, School of Messina. So for we to now continue on and ask the Holy Spirit to help us to live a good and holy and a wonderful life. And so let us now stand and present to God our needs. <clears throat> for the Holy Catholic Church, for Francis our Pope, Timothy our Bishop, and for all uh, bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders of the world, that they, that they would work together to promote peace and justice, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our school community, that we would serve and not be served, and use our time to work together to love others as Christ loved us, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are sick and continue to suffer from their pandemic, that they would experience the healing power of Christ's love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For vocations to religious life, that God may call forth from our communities individuals who are willing to commit themselves to religious life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own needs and intentions that we now are calling our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We will now send the blessings of God upon our students and our teachers for this new year. Bow your heads and pray for the blessings of God. Lord God, your spirit of wisdom fills the earth and teaches us your ways. Look upon these students and bless them. Let them enjoy their learning and take delight in new discoveries. Help them to persevere in their studies and give them the desire to learn all things well. Look upon our teachers and our staff. Let them strive to share their knowledge with gentle patience and endeavor always to bring the truth to eager minds. Grant that students and teachers alike may follow Jesus Christ, who is the way, the truth, and the life forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated.
So my dear friends, let us now stand and pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Amen. Look, we pray, O Lord, on the spiritual sacrifice placed upon your altar with loving devotion, and give your servants a right spirit, so that their faith may make these gifts pleasing to you, and their humility commend them through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you bestow gifts suited to every season and guide the governing of your church in wonderful ways. By the power of the Holy Spirit, you come unfailingly to her aid, so that with a heart always subject to you, she may never fail to seek your help in time of trouble, nor cease to give you thanks in times of joy, through Christ our Lord. And so, in the company with the choirs of the angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. <laughs> You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The history of faith. In black, in blood hath our Lord and prophets for resurrection until you will come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that by our taking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Timothy our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters, 
who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed Apostles, Saint Robert, and all the saints who please you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. We sing together as God's family to pray the prayer that Jesus our brother taught us and so we dare to say our Father hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. O Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. This is Jesus. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. We stand. May these gifts we have consumed benefit us, O Lord, that we may always be aflame with the same spirit whom you wondrously pour out upon your apostles through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated as I invite now Mrs. Maldonado to come forward. Good morning, boys and girls. Good morning, Mrs. Maldonado. And good morning to those at home in school, right? Waiting um, and watching and participating from class. Our second home. It is tradition during this Mass, our first Mass together, our first gathering, to welcome the new students. I only have half of you with me here um, in church, junior high, and you did a great job. But I have the others at school, and they see me now, and they're probably wondering how I'm in two places at one time. But when you hear your name called, we ask that you stand. We want to formally welcome you. We want to make sure we introduce you to everyone at home, at home in school. And we'll give you a round, of a round of applause, but it's my honor to share your names today. So when you hear your name, whether in school, in class, or here, please stand and stay standing, okay? So in pre-K, our youngest of the youngest, young, 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 three-year-olds, we have Jason Zelenka, Joseph Giannastasio, Adrian Pang, Boda Kelly, John O'Malley, Madison Smith, Reardon Coleman, Alex Ryan McKenna, Nora Ben, Bryce McCarthy, Leonardo Ficara, Ethan Buckward, Layla Cruz, Riley Bishop, and very soon, Mady Romero. Pre-K four, we're blessed with a lot of pre-K. We have Owen Flanagan, Juliana Puma, Addison Moni, Finley Yates, Gabriella Enrique, Neil Egan, Lucy Valentine, Gregory Montemonaro, Killian Farrell, John Reynolds, Ailish Tully, Charlotte Hawkins, Maeve Hawkins, Mia Marcelino, Riley Fenton, Sean McKenna, and Jonah George. In kinder, kindergarten, we have Il Ilana Gravier, Matthew Fernandez, Aria Mirakash, Selena Pang, Valentina Gutierrez, Shane Healy, Jane Jean Noel and Sia Doshi. In first grade, we have Maeve Tully, Jordan Mullen, Penelope Gutierrez, Catalina Jones, Naya Yazpanan, Darren Reeves, and Daniel Chin. In second grade, we have Brian McKay, Liliana Rascani, Catherine Harris. Ava, or rather Alexa Bove. Third grade, Ava Bove. A lot of siblings. In fourth grade, we have Erica Librizzi, Philip Poltokarov. And moving on to you all here. So when you hear your name, please stand. And that in the classroom, I hope you're still standing. Catherine McKay, Max Rascani. Darius Innes, Catherine Walsh, Alicia Etheridge, Taya Blackburn Baker, happy birthday, James Fortescue, Josiah Genot, and soon to join us on Monday, Jaciel Sandoval, Michael Potokarov, and Lorkin Walsh. And Rizzy, where are you? Rizzy, my friend, there you are. Thank you so very much. 
Welcome to St. Margaret's School formally. Can you give them a round of applause? Have a seat. I see those two young men in the eighth grade. Are they new to our school? Yes. You play basketball? <laughs> Very good, welcome. Good to have you, CYO. Well, boys and girls, one of the also gifts that we do is we give our new students a copy of the Bible, as I mentioned during the homily. And again, um, it's a gift that our, power, our school gives to you to always hold on to. It's not just for this year, but for the rest of your life. And this year we have our school name emblazoned on the leather cover so that you'll always remember the Word of God. So it's a beautiful book. And it's a way, beautiful way to pray. And all of you boys and girls, it's a beautiful way to pray. One of the ways of praying with the Bible is at night before you go to sleep, maybe you can't go to sleep right away, take the Bible. And the Bible should always be near your bed. And so you take the Bible and just open up the Bible to wherever it is. And just let your eyes drop and see what you read. And that's God talking to you. God wants to give you that message. It's a beautiful way to pray. So you think about what is it? You think about what God wants me to see here and see in this little passage that my eyes fall to, and then that helps you pray to God and, and ask God to help you. All right? So um, we ask God to send his blessings upon these Bibles and to make them come alive. God's word is a living word. It's not just pages on a, words on a page. It's God's living word. That word comes into you. And so God, we ask you, those who read and pray with these books and Bibles, May they always be inspired by the gift of the Holy Spirit, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You want to give them out now, or you want to for at the uh, end of... Let's give them out now. Sure. So those of you who are new, come on up and receive the Bible oh, from... I'm going to call the yeah. names. May I call oh, okay, sure. Yeah, sure. So it's fifth grade and all the new students. Okay. So Xavier Balson, Molly Bennett. Xavier Chung, Keegan Coakley, Maeve Colford. Ms. Meadow, can you help? Thank you. Come up and pass them to the Bible. Thank you. Evan DeMassey. Come on, Evan, just come on up. Madeline Fortescue. Caitlin Gilday. Darius Innes, Mary Kearns, Kayla Lima, Cassius Logan, Ellie Lowry, Joseph Lynch, Catherine McKay, Andrew McLaughlin, Alessia Muscatella, Sean Patel, Yankee Pakistaka, Anthony Ramirez, Lauren Ritter, Max Rascani, Kate Russell, Pomarsali Smith, Abigail Swanson, Ethan Teba, Heidi Wanamaker, Cassandra Zepeda, Lorkin Walsh, Lorkin, well, come up and Meet Father and let's see how tall you are against him. Father, can you just can we just welcome them? Sure. Okay. Michael Potokarov. I probably just chewed up your name. James comes to Fortis, you come say hello to Father again and we'll make sure that you have your Bible in class. Josiah, come on up and say hello to Father. Catherine Walsh, Alicia Eldridge, K. 
Kaya Blackburn Welcome. Baker. Thank you so very much, Father, for helping me to welcome them and distribute their beautiful Bibles. And thank you all very much. We talked about a 600-year-old tradition that every school started with the Holy Spirit. Now, there was always another tradition that always the Mass of the Holy Spirit, the pastor would give the rest of the school a day off. Well, I can't do that anymore. But what I can do, I think, is give you a dress down day. So when that works out with Mrs. Maldonado and the faculty, they'll grant you a pastor's dress down day, which is a freebie, all right? That's my gift to you. Now your gift to me is being in our school. And we'll get to know each other, a lot of our new students will get to know each other. Father Clark will be around, I'll be around. So I look forward to having a very beautiful and a very prayerful and a very wonderful year. So please stand now, we ask God to bless us as we begin a new year. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. The Mass is ended, go in peace. Thanks be to God. Amen.